This certainly will be the best performance hall in Northern California, bar none. This is a new front door for the University of California, Davis, but it's also a new front door for our region. This really is an emblem of what the region will be. I love to think of this glorious building visible to travelers on I-80 as they come past our campus, inviting them to stop, to visit. And this is a real opportunity for us to reach out to the region. It gives us that symbol uh, at our front door that uh, we are here, uh, we want the community to be here, and that's a tremendous opportunity for the university. It opens the door to the university. The arts are an integral part of California life. They are the best record of who we are, what we've been, and what we will become. This beautiful new art center is the crown jewel in California's artistic community. It will showcase some of the brightest minds and most creative spirits of our time. It will unleash the creative potential of countless generations of UC Davis students. And it gives the opportunity for the students to actually get to see performances that are of a high quality. But also, we're going to get to perform in this space. Undergraduates don't get to perform in spaces like this. So. I can't believe it. It's very exciting. Two things drive the design of, of that building. One is function. Everything in there is there for a reason. But the second thing is really aspiring to uplift people. So the stone is there for acoustic reasons, to keep that resonance of sound in the room. But it's beautiful. The wood is there as a hard surface to reflect sound in the room for a measured length of time, but it's beautiful. And the combination of the wood and the stone together in, in this light, kind of soaring room is going to be a spectacular experience for people. This is a multi-purpose hall, and a multi-purpose hall is a tremendous challenge in that you have to serve everything from a large symphony orchestra, perhaps backed by a big choir, to ballet, to jazz, to dramatic performances, and you have to then make the hall vary and adapt to fit the need of the particular performance. And the way you do that is by moving certain surfaces near the stage to control the reflections that are coming to the audience. Yeah, I'm moving these uh, acoustical banners out. The stage has a big canopy that raises and lowers to project sound. The music shell, which moves, shortens the length of the stage and brings it closer into the audience when you have you want all that sound to come out into the audience chamber and none of it to go backwards and up that big fly tower, that big space above the stage. At the top of the room, you'll see a kind of wooden screen, and that's what we call an acoustic gallery. There are curtains behind that, that screen that retreat into the wall, and all the surfaces are hard at the top of the room, so it reflects sound and keeps that richness of sound in the room. When you want the opposite condition, you can pull curtains around the whole top of the room, and the whole sound characteristics of the room will change. The floor itself is isolated from the ground, and the reason is Ron McKay, who was the acoustic expert on the job, found out that by doing some testing that he wasn't afraid of the sound of, from the railroad tracks, the audible sound. He was afraid of the possibility that audible sound could come through the vibration of the earth. So what he advised us to do is actually separate the floor that people sit on from the actual foundation of the building that sits on the ground. So there's a big airspace between the floor that people sit on and the foundation of the building. That ended up getting used by the engineers as a way to bring heating and cooling into the building. 
A lot of these buildings traditionally were heated and cooled from up above. This was a way that they could actually just heat and cool right where people are. When one develops a world-class university, one wants to have a kind of facility, say comparable to the labs we offer our scientists, that enable the world's greatest artists, in addition to our faculty, to have a venue that highlights their excellence. That's what this venue will do. UC Davis is a comprehensive university that has great strengths in the sciences and and everybody knows about them, but what this uh, will do especially is make people know that in fact we are strong across the spectrum. And believe you me, Davis, uh, with everything they're doing, their Viticulture Enology School and also the Performing Arts Center, it can't be any better. I mean, it, it, it's gonna raise the image of the university. It's gonna be a great cultural step forward, in my opinion. Our UC system is a public treasure, but it cannot succeed on public sector support alone. A world-class university system needs world-class private donors. The Mandavis and the Jacksons have demonstrated once again they are true friends of public education. With their generosity and the generosity of all of those who created the Mandavi Center, we have created a lasting symbol of California's commitment to arts and education. It has the capability of generating an interest in the arts which will change the lives of many, many people. It can be a standing, ongoing, daily testimony to the importance of the arts in our lives. This is really our coming-of-age facility in the region. It's a legacy, and we have to pass on 